KKK and a fascist USA. Thousands of activists across the country turned the annual President's Day into an anti-Donald Trump rally, calling it Not My President's Day. Demonstrators in Chicago, New York, Miami, Los Angeles, and other cities are angry at President Trump's month-long presidency, where he has called for a Muslim ban, rounded up and deported uh, illegal immigrants, relentlessly attacked the, the uh, federal bench as well as the media, and has told countless lies in his speeches, tweets, and even in a news conference. And at Morehouse College in Atlanta, students turned the President's Day celebration into what they call Barack Obama Day. There was also an all-day discussion critiquing President Barack Obama's presidency and legacy that was live-streamed on Facebook. Professor and author and radio personality Michael Eric Dyson was the keynote speaker. To think about his presidency, and it's hard to even think about being critical of a man in light of what we got now. Right, it's just on principle. It's just on principle. No matter what principled critique you might have, like that was so much better. It was so far superior to the toddler presidency we are enduring right now. Also, some news, President Trump has named a new national security advisor after last week's resignation of Mike Flynn as well. Lots to talk about with our panel. Joining me in Washington, D.C., Eugene Craig III, CEO of the Eugene uh, Craig uh, Organization. Also, Republican uh, member, uh, Dr. Avis Jones, the Weaver, leadership strategist and author of How Exceptional Black Women Lead. Dr. Wilmer Leon, Sirius XM radio host, author of Politics, Another Perspective. And Spencer Overton, he is, of course, the president of the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies. Uh, it is quite interesting, Eugene, to see on President's Day, normally a day that does not get lots of attention, where folks took to the streets. I mean, this is a president for four consecutive weeks now who has generated massive protests across the country. America might want to get used to this. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's another day of protest, another week of protest. Um, you know, personally, I like to see, you know, more uh, substantial act action coming out of these folk. Um, you know, if this excitement, if Fred was there three months ago, you know, Donald Trump may not be president right now. Um, but, you know, he's our president, you know, at least for the next four years. Uh, we may not have to celebrate him on President's Day, but there are 44 other presidents you could celebrate. Yeah, but here's the deal, though, Wilmer. This is significant because, again, what you're seeing is you're seeing folks push back uh, on what has taken place so far. You know, President Trump has talked about how he is this wheeled oil machine and they've accomplished more than most presidents ever in a short period of time. But if you actually look at what they've done, they haven't accomplished much. I mean, no. at this point, uh, eight years ago, President Obama, they'd already passed a stimulus bill. Well, there's been a lot of executive action, uh, which... Uh, looks good on paper, but substantively has uh, not produced much. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if these protests can actually be turned into action. Can the Democrats actually harness some of this, uh, some of this power and some of this energy and, and turn it in, into something substantive? Because uh, there's a huge disconnect between Democratic leadership and the people that they're supposed to be leading. And hopefully Nancy Pelosi and Schumer and the rest of them will wake up and see that if they can actually construct a message, stay on message and articulate a message, that there might be something there for them. And quickly to Eugene's point about those folks, had, they, had this energy been there uh, three months ago, then we might not be where we are right now. That has nothing to do with voter suppression. And those folks probably did turn out, and the voter suppression is what got us where we are today. It wasn't lack of turnout. Uh, I'll tell you what, Avis, the reason this matters, Avis, because the reality is uh, protest drives attention. It wakes people up. Uh, and so you can't have action until you have people who are uh, who are awakened and alive. Absolutely. And it's a barometer of passion. Uh, there is a huge sort of upswing in passion around fighting back and resisting this particular presidency. And let me just also point out, it's not just being done through protests. You have people who are going to their elective representatives, town halls all across the country, all week long, being very vocal about what they want. And I'm not that concerned about the Democrats trying to jump ahead of this train. The train 
Highness is leaving, okay? And I believe that what's happening here is that the people are pulling their representatives in the direction that they need to go. And they've made it very plain. Either you come out very strongly against this fascist, very just, rep just, just reprehensible administration, or we will primary you and we will replace you come the next election. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.